Hello everybody, we are doing a little bit of Starfinder prep. Excellent, so there's a couple things we're going to be doing today. We're going to be a lot of coding. Um, so those of you who have watched my streams, thank you first of all. Um, you can check them out on the using the tubes. You can also check them out live. Uh, I have D and D streams on Wednesday and Thursday, and I have alternating campaign Starfinder streams on Sunday night. Um, so you're welcome to stop by, say hello. I've got lots of cool things in my little Sven Zone particles that you can buy and help or hinder the party or just mess with people um, or the the monsters they fight and stuff like that. So come on by, say hello. Uh, I've got a, a good people um, that hang out with us. So we're going to be doing um, some coding today. As I mentioned, uh, I like having things made easy for my character, for my players. Um, we have a new player. I'm going to go ahead and put this up a little bit. Change the scale UI so when... You want to make everything bigger on your screen in Fancy Grounds. There's a way to do that. Um, I want to do that so you guys can see it a little better. So first thing I want to do is unlock my chat box. Hold down Control, left click and pull it up. Left click and hold and then pull up on the mouse to change the box. I'm going to hit slash the word scale, S-C-A-L-E. UI all together one word one one let's go with 115 today boom all right so that clearly makes it much bigger let's shrink down this a little bit all right and I'll even make this a little bit smaller keep grabbing the letters instead of uh, where there is no letters all right so let's take a look at the coding um, atomic Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday. Happy Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I hope you're ready to go with uh, have your gifts for your sister and your brother. Uh, I hope everything's ready to go for you. I still have one present to gift to get. I honestly just don't know what to get them, so I, that's why I have normally... Throughout from any pretty much September on, in the back of my mind, I'm always not on the lookout, and so I, as I see different things, I'm like, oh, this would be a good gift for them, and I'll snatch it, and good gift for them, snatch it. Um, like my first gift I bought this year was in October for my spousal unit, and um, so I have all the gifts done, but I have. This year just isn't hasn't been my year. There's a couple people that I'm like, eh, I don't know what to get you guys. Nothing's nothing has inspired me. Um, Got to keep an eye out for those. That's it. Gift exactly. Yep. Uh, and I'm usually pretty good. I, I'm I usually nail it on the head. I usually get gifts that everybody likes. In my opinion, the perfect gift is something that the person will use but wouldn't buy themselves. Um, probably one of my best examples is one that was bought for me. My father bought me a little holder that you put shaving cream in and with a click of a button it warms the shaving cream. So you, and then you push it so when it comes out it's nice and warm it's like going to a barber shop and you have warm shaving cream. I would never buy that for myself but while I had it I used it all the time. It was great. Anyway, that's my perfect gift. Something they would use, but they wouldn't want to buy themselves. Um, so, but this year, like I said, I just haven't uh, had a whole lot of that it gifts this year. So, we'll see how it plays out. We'll see what happens. Um, there's a couple of them that, that I did get. So, and... Still don't know when. Maybe today I'll stop by and get something for that last. 
person to figure, figure it out. Anyway, enough derailing. Let's get back into the action here. Um, let's see what uh, Atomic was up to today. Fall Guys. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing some. Still going with uh, what I've been watching. He's, he's still going with the classics. Gems of War, Asphalt 9. Pilot in his Dauntless. <coughs> but he's also been doing some um, Fall Guys and Splatoon, I think it's called. Um, the thing. The paint game. Um, so. Me either shrug, but I got a couple of things from my mom that she tried to buy herself. I had to spoil the surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had that happen before too. So. Cool. Yeah, that's my typical go to when I ask, you know, when Christmas comes around and stuff and I talk to people, either before or after. I don't say, what did you get? I say, what did you get somebody else? That was a cool gift. So, um, that's, that's typically my question du jour when I'm talking to people, finding out what they get other people. Um, and little kids, too, I'll do that for them, you know, five, six, seven-year-olds. And, you know, if you, if you could get your mom or you could get your brother, anything in the world, what would, what would you get them? Just a little for fun. Um. All right, so as I was mentioning, we're going to be doing coding today. We have a new character named Bali. Uh, keeps the focus on giving. It does, yeah. And Bali is a skittermander. Uh, skittermanders are very cutesy. There's a whole one shots and stuff made for uh, skittermanders or about skittermanders I should say so that's what they look like they're a little six armed and they're small they're only like two feet high so they're basically like a, um, a teddy bear but with teeth um, here it is the other one here's the other version of them so that's what they look like. And we have a new player, and she chose to be one of these guys. Um, and so we need to do some coding for that character. Uh, and I also need to check a couple of standbys like Doc Dade, um, Orendor, make sure, and Twitch. I need to check those guys to make sure they are up to speed. Um, and. have the coding that's needed now fancy grounds uh, for D and D 5e has a lot of coding built in a lot of the spells a lot of the uh, even some of the things like barbarian rage now is pre-coded and things like that so they're getting more and more automated to with um, all the different things that are coded and stuff so you uh, and of course there are extensions you can buy Fancy Starfinder, there isn't a way to save the coding, which is a little sad and a little frustrating because I could be making some good bucks if you could. Um, what I mean by that is in D and D, you go to the actions page, and under you can just drop things in the spell section and coding for for all the different stuff. And that's, and that's how they make the coding packages. So the Barbarians, Rage, the uh, um, all of the racial coding, all that stuff is done through the spell section. Well, and the way you do it is once you build the code, you can pull it from your character sheet into the, your spells. And now it's there for any character to pull from the spells, and you can just go back and forth, and you're good to go. 
with Starfinder, you don't have that option. If I pulling it to the spells doesn't do anything, I can't then drop it onto other people. Also, the spell section is separate from the action section. Your actions are, you have, um, the way it's built is totally different. So, I have to go in and, and, and manually code everything. Um, either if I do it or my players do it. Um, so, that means pretty much I do it. Uh, she, the player for Bali, uh, does a good job though. Um, she makes it to where I don't have to do as much work as some of the other players. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down here. What I do is I just go to here in their abilities page on their character sheet. And I pretty much open everything. So I'm going to start with the racial traits. Click on the, the symbol. Um, then I'm going to go to theme knowledge. Um, I don't have to worry about proficiencies pretty usually. Uh, then I'm going to go to uh, feats. Open up those. And then, of course, the class abilities. So for now, because I have all of the, all the right side going on, I'm going to just go ahead and pause for a minute. I'll do these, and I'll come back and do the class abilities. Um, so we go to the actions page, see what she has already on there, stuff like that. My dog's being weird. I'm going to see what's going on.
Here we go. We are back. Hopefully, didn't lose you, Atomic. But uh, it is below freezing where I live right now. Thank you, thank you. So, the dog is 12 years old. And uh, it's very hard on his paws and stuff. He won't let... Uh, we have snow and stuff, and it's painful for him to be outside. And so he, when he needs to go out, I pretty much have to take him out then. Um, so to prevent things happening in the house, I don't want to happen. Um, so, so we pulled up everything from the abilities page on the right side. The feats, theme, abilities, and racial traits. Now we're going to jump into the actions page, uh, and we're going to bring all these down. So I'm just clicking on the gray part, and that just minimizes it all. So the, she has it set up as a vanguard, which is her class, her, like a warrior or mage. She's called a vanguard. Um, and then abilities is how they have it. she has it set up. And that's for like, um, so it looks like we can stick the racial abilities and the, I could, um, think I might put the uh, theme abilities in there too. So protective fur, first of all. So we're going to pull up the combat tracker as well. So you can see what it's going to look like once we're done. See, we can't make these a little smaller. So they're still there. You can see, you'll still see what we're working with. But uh, wink. There we go. All right. So here's Bali. So protective fur. Your thick fur protects you from certain environmental hazards and resistant to poisons. So plus two versus fortitude against cold and heat. Plus four versus contact, excuse me, contact diseases and poisons. So there isn't really a way. I mean, you could code plus two save, but it's easier just to use the modifier. So really the only thing you need for coding this particular thing uh, because now if it was you have a plus two against all fortitude saves then that we could code and we could put in there and make it easy but because this is only for specific um, types of saves against certain types of things poisons and cold and heat in this case we're just going to put a reminder in the combat tracker so that as these things happen you can just look in the combat tracker. Oh, yeah, I have a save against this. So, we're going to go ahead and double check, see what she has already. And by she, I mean her, the, the player. So, what she did was she went here and she opened this up using a magnifying glass, added the word abilities, number of sections, she put two. This isn't really class, um, but there's not. It will be character level. So we're going to go back to character. Because you can have different types of, here it is, character. So you can have different types. So like this here, Vanguard. So say you had a Vanguard and who was also an operative, multi-class. You could then have operative level, class level. I mean, a Vanguard level, stuff like that. Anyway, but in this case, it's based on the character itself. None of these, they aren't spellcasting abilities or um, abilities that, that have a DC or, or use a stat. The Vanguard abilities do. So we'll see. So if you open that up, for example, um, it's the stat is Constitution. So there's uh, the base DC. So any kind of DC she has for these things underneath 
will be 13 um, because it's using her Vanguard main ability uh, and each class has its own different one all right let's see uh, do another little quote all right and let's see so plus two circumstance fort versus cold heat plus four disease poison so what she wrote so then uh, so like I said she opened this up put a number of sections too because he has protective fur and hyper if there's a third one you just change the section and it'll add another section down here um, you can also have racial and then put fur and hyper as underneath racial and then theme and have the different theme abilities underneath there. Um, and I think I might do that. Uh, let's see. We'll keep this too. So we'll make this. I'm going to change this to race, racial. I'll even say. Skittermander. And then what I'm going to do here is I'll add a plus here, add item. Click like this. And um, I don't know if I will be able to. Drag this over or not. Let's see. It did. I was. Okay, good. So I'm actually just going to right click on this line right here. We want to be careful. We don't want to get rid of the entire area. We just want to get rid of that one ability. All right, so we have Skittermander, Protective Fur, and Hyper. And then we're going to have Theme. Which is background. Um, and her background is, go back to our main page, Cult Hunter. Okay, so we're going to go to back here and go Cult Hunter. And we'll just, we're just going to change this to what we want it to be in a minute when we get to that point. Um, so you can see here, so we're going to open this up and see what it does. So first thing, um, actually, no, well, let's finish up Protective Fur. All right, so Protective Fur, you see what she did was she added. So if you right click here, you can add an eye um, ability action. And then it would be, in this case, it would be uh, effect. And that's what she did there. So that added the effect is on herself. Um, it could also be target. And then she just typed what it does. Again, this is just a reminder. It doesn't act actively change any roles or anything. This is just a reminder. Plus two fort versus cold heat. Plus four fort versus contact. That's perfect. Um, oops. Uh, uh, contact. If you open it up. Diseases and poisons. So that's perfect. To herself. It never runs out. All that stuff. That's great. But. What she doesn't have in here is the explanation. So we want to go through these. So there is no class. Uh, the feature is a feat. And the source is pretty sure this comes from a knock. Uh, I want to say protective fur is from the core rule book if I'm not mistaken so what you can do is you go here to character feats once you find it it'll tell you where it's from so we'll put fur starfinder character operations manual okay 
So that's the source. Starfinder character operations manual. Manual. All right, starfinder character operations manual. There isn't, it's not class. Uh, it's not level. It's not pertinent. And then what I do is I put what it does. So we open this up. We can go here to uh, copy. Enter. Bring it down. Copy. Paste. Now you'll find you can't copy and paste unless this is unlocked. So that's why, see, because I can't highlight that. So that's why it was, uh, I unlocked it first. Now you can handle it. Now you can copy and paste it from there. So now she doesn't have to go to her abilities page. She can just see it right here. And now we'll lock it. So now you see what it is, where it came from what it is, all the details are right here in the piezo symbol on her actions page. So now protective fur is done. Ta -da, we can close it. Now let's go to hyper. So hyper, um, I'm just going to hyper because it's right here already. So let's go to hyper, there we go. Once per day, a skin commander can take an extra move action. Simple as that. Um, I believe this is from the Alien Archive. But let's find out. If we go to races, we go to... Starfinder Alien Archive. Yep. So she used a subclass of Skeetermander. That's not in the Alien Archive, so I want to see. I'm going to go back to that, open this up again, and see what it gives them. It does give them Hyper. Okay, perfect. All right, so this comes from the Alien Archive. So again, we open up. I want to make sure this is the right one. So I'm going to open this. It is. The source is Alien Archive. Did I do that right? Yeah, Starfinder Alien Archive single. Okay, perfect. No class feature is Rachel. There is no level. And now I put in the info. Again, we have to unlock it. If you're fast, you can probably just type this as fast as I copy and paste. But I'm half-assed when it comes to half fast when it comes to typing. So um, I have peaked at about 40-ish. And no matter how much I've tried, I've spent about nine months and I went from an average of about 35 to 40, 42. And just cannot break that ceiling. Um, and I've been typing for 30 years now. No, 40 years. So, uh, even took a typing class in high school, and that where they had and they had those back then, back in the day with the old typewriters. Um, all right, so boom. So now this is set again. This is here. So this is nothing you need to code. It's just a reminder, one and two, you need to, it can only be done once a day. 
So you need a, a counter. Uh, and the way you do that, so you open this up again. I mean, uh, you right click on here. Uh, I'm going to just put in here hyper. She doesn't have this on here. So I'm just going to add one just to remind her, hey, you're hyper. Uh, so she doesn't have to look here all the time. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to add. We're going to go to effect. Now to add the point right here, the uh, the use counter, I like to, to play typing tutor games on the computer. Yeah, I have, um, there's a, one of my favorites is a website where you race. So you have a, it's like a drag race uh, and you're typing against other live players uh, in your main, you know, typing ability area. You know, they don't put people who type 10 words a minute against people who can type 100 words a minute. But uh, it's usually within 10 points or so of you. And you're, you're typing sentences and um, and you're racing the other players. Uh, it's anywhere from two to four um, other players. And I did that for a long time. Um, there are all, all different ones that have individual like red letters that will fall like rain. And so you just have to hit all these different let, random letters. Uh, and, you know, it makes them disappear as they fall, things like that. But the racing one is still my favorite. And I did that more than anything else. Um, just had to train myself not to look at the keyboard. So I was trying to do that to where I wasn't looking at the keyboard. Um, yep, lots of fun. Lots of fun. Okay, so what you do is you go down here to where it says standard on your um, actions page. Click it to where it says preparation. And then you can change it. So right now this is zero, so there is no bubble. This is one, so it, it makes it there. The entropic pool, we'll see when we get to there, has three. And so when you then click back to standard or combat, oh, this only has standard, uh, you'll see there's three and one. All right, so that's how you get that dot there. Um, this is just a um, quick summary of what the, the ability does. So one, one X day, take extra move action. Boom. So um, you don't even have to have the word take, you can just have move action. So what I'm doing though here is I'm adding this um, to her combat tracker. So we don't need to actually open it up, you can open it up and type in here and change all the stuff in here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it all here. Click on target to self and then type in hyper. And then I'm going to actually apply it. Click. So you'll see effects hyper. And then I close it. Close the, this. So now we've got this once a day. And then you can close, if you click the gray mark, it closes it all down. So we're done with the Rachel abilities that we've come across so far. <coughs> all right, now here's the hyper, finish this. <coughs> all right, so Guardian is um, this is a racial ability. If I'm not mistaken, let's double check it. Yes. So this is special to her, the type of Skidamander she chose. So let's go find out where it's from. So we open up our Web b -b 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 browser and the web br the uh, 
place I go for all things Starfinder is the Archives of Nethys. What a great place this is, Archives of Nethys. Amazing for Starfinder. I haven't even looked at their Pathfinder stuff. If it's anything like their Starfinder stuff, then if you play any one of the finders, have this as a hotkey like I do. Um, so in this case, Starfinder, I click on Races. I go down here to Skidamander. And then I can see all these different ones. Guardian. So the source is near space. That's what I was, And that's what I was looking for. Um, so now I minimize this. May need to use this one again. So we go here. We open this back up. It is a Skidamander thing. So we go plus. We go Guardian. We click on the Paizo symbol. And resource is near space, not plot class. It is racial. And then we take this and we open it up. We go like this, copy it, paste it, boom. This aspect of it is done. So now we need a short description. It says most self skittermanners are self-sacrificing, and some put themselves directly in harm's way to protect others. These skittermanners can enter or occupy the space of a single, medium, large, or small without penalties. They take minus two to their armor class while sharing their space, but provide the creature whose space they share with a shield bonus of one armor class against ranged attacks. So, the definition is minus two AC, oops, that's a underscore, minus two AC plus in same space give plus one AC. So now let's code it. So we need two codes. We need a code for the Skidamander because they're going to get a minus two to their AC. And then we need a code for the person with whom they're sharing the space, which will give them a plus one AC. So I have a choice here. I can either say plus one AC and just ignore the fact that it's only for ranged. Or I can say um, plus one ranged attacks just not have it be coded. So I'm probably just going to ignore the fact that it's for ranged. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to add, go down here. We're going to go into Guardian, right click, add ability. This is going to be add effect. Do it again, right click, add ability action, add effect. This one is target. This one is, I mean, I will make this the top one self, and then this one will be target. All right, so this is called Guardian, so it's going to be Guardian. So I always put what it's called first, so you can see I've trained her well. Hyper, Protective Fur, Improved Combat Maneuver, Micro Attunement, Tropic Pool. I always say what it is that's doing it, because if you just have plus like this, AC2, plus, AC what is that from? Why is she getting an AC bonus of two. We don't know. And it's not good. I don't like it. I don't like it. I want to be able to see 
what's giving her the bonus and, or why, stuff like that. So, anyway, back to this. Guardian is what it's called. You put always put a semicolon. That just means whatever is in front of the semicolon, it doesn't really care. It ignores. But then you put minus 2, I mean AC, colon, minus 2. And that is for self. Colon means whatever is right in front of it is what modifies, is what's being modified. To the right of the colon is the amount. Um, and then we open it up. So this allows you to change how many rounds it is. So if it's like only one round or to the top of the next round, stuff like that. This doesn't happen. This happens as long as they're in that same space. So we're going to do the same thing. Guardian. I'm going to put guarded by Bali. And now instead of a minus, we just put one. You don't have to have a plus if you're adding to anything. You only need a plus if it's minus. Um, so it's AC1 and that's target. So now her guardian trait is there under her things. You can do this as many times as she wants. Um, and we can also just double check and make sure that what this says is accurate. So let's open back up our guardian here. Um, minus two. Yeah, so they, I just copied this before because I, I added this trait to I don't own the near space book myself, so I had to add this trait to my repertoire. Um, this replaces grappler is the only thing I didn't put in there because I don't care. Um, all right, so guardian is gone. Guardian is done. We can put this down. Boom. Next. All right, so here's another racial trait. Six armed. Um, they can allow them, they can hold up to six weapons worth of weapons and equipment. They can, it increases the number of items they can carry, but it cannot change the number of items they can use on any particular turn or the number of attacks they have or things like that. So, um, you can see here from this, especially this picture, this one, you can sort of see the third or three arms there, but... Here's the three arms plus the two legs, so the eight limbed creatures. Um, lots of sleeves in their society. So I don't need to code this. This is just, I mean, it is so inherent. It's like saying a human has two ears. I mean, it just. You don't need to be reminded of this fact. So it uh, doesn't do anything special. doesn't give any kind of special bonus as far as attack bonus or modifier or armor class or anything like that. So we don't need to code it. I'm just looking to see. Yep, so that's all the racial abilities. So we're done. Let's get them in there. We can close it. Now we're going to Cult Hunter. And I'll go ahead and put theme. Eh, nah, I'm not going to. She can remember. All right, so here's the theme knowledge. Open this up a little bit more. Boink, boink, boink. All right. There we go. So we need to find out where this cult hunter came from. This is themes. So we go to character. We go to themes. We go to Cult Hunter. What? 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 Um, 
I know I had it before. Why don't I have it now? I must not have a book open or something. What kind of modules am I missing? So you open up mo under library modules, go to activation. All right, see all the ones that aren't, don't have the little open laptop. And I'm just looking here, Dawn of Flame 4, don't care. Dead Sons. Bunch of map packs. A map tool place I'm going to open up just for fun. Signal of Screams. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have just checked down here on the uh, uh, Neth Nethys, Archives of Nethys. Skitter Crash, free RPG day. Let's load this so I can see if we have more Skittermander pictures. And load all three of these. And Archive 4, I don't have loaded. All right, close. Close. Still not here, so let's find out where this came from. What am I missing here? We'll go back up here to... Themes. Okay. Cult Hunter. Starfinder number 16, The Blind City. That's why. Okay. Um... All right, so I do want to have this available. So I have a couple of choices. I can just ignore the fact that this exists because we already have it. She already has it on her character. Um, or I can add it to the themes that I have in, the, in this campaign. Trying to shrink this. There we go. Goodness sakes. So if you wanted to add a theme, you just go here to your themes. And you just right click and say create item. And then you just go down, do what it says, building mods, features, and you add those. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll do Cult Hunters, what it's called. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to min, um, minimize or restore down this. Cut it in half. Take up half my screen. And I've already got this minimized or halved. There we go. All right, so... Plus one wisdom is the only ability mod there is. A whiz, and this is one. So now we go to fill in this information here. What happens if I do that? It does the whole page. I don't want to do that, so we'll do this. Control C, boom, boom. Put it in italics because that's the way the other themes are. So now I have all of the details, all of the uh, minutia on what the cult hunter does. I'm then going to put down here on the bottom
Star Finder number 16. The Blind City. Control B. Just make it bold. That's where it came from. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put page 45. So that's there as well. All right, so here's, so that's that. Now we go to features. Um, so there's four. One. And this is level one. New class feature. It is called theme knowledge. Theme knowledge. And we slap it in there, boom. Next, this is level six. We open it up. It is called Conspiracy Reb. And again, we just copy and paste all this. Close it, boom. Plus level 12 <coughs> is called Flash Deprogramming. I don't feel like typing it all out, so I'm just going to boom and boom. And then the final one is level 16, 18. Open it up. Inspiring preparation. All right, so we got inspiring pr 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 preparation. And then we do control and paste, copy paste rather. Control C, control V, boom. And now all these are done, boom. So this is now available, lock it. So this is now available for, here we go, call it Taunter. Um, Actually, we'll go ahead and put, since a lot of these have it already, we will unlock it and we will put whiz, whiz. So that going forward, pe uh, people will know that this is uh, wisdom. Okay, so now we built it and put it into our campaign. We can go ahead and minimize this. We can go over here and back to full screen. So now that it's here, we still need to code it here. So first thing you do is theme, knowledge. Now you'll notice I have this check mark. So what I'm doing is I'm taking what was there already, just typing over it. So I've got to go to here, preparation. This is actually zero. Put that back to standard. And this is a bonus when dealing with cults, if I'm not mistaken. Let's find out. All 
All right, I'm going to go here to her main. So because we just built this, rest, close, minimize, okay. Um, I think she just typed this in. John Flame, the Blind City Player Resources. Activate the module. I don't have. Oh, I do have it. So I just went through all that work for nothing because I do own Dawn of Flame AP4 Blind City. Okay. So, yes. So, never mind. Um, all right. So. At least now you guys know how to build a theme. But, uh, yeah, cause I actually do own Blind City. I just didn't realize that was part of the... We haven't gotten to book four. We're still... We just started book two, so... I didn't realize that, that was part of the book. Anyway, never mind. So what I was going to do is I was just going to delete this and pull over the Cult Hunter theme so that when she hits level six, when she hits the higher levels... It'll automatically add the uh, theme abilities. Don't have to do that because she already has it. And then when she gets to that level, we'll have it. So, cool. So, let's go back to our action to finish this up. It says, you're obsessed with cults and know where to find them. Reduce the DC checks of to recall knowledge about cults and diplomacy to, to gather information about them. Sense motive is a class skill. Um, now where you get a plus one. You gain the ability of plus one. Yep. Just make sure she had sense motive as a class skill. She doesn't. Okay, so if you look here at your skill page tab, this first um, the lock button says is it considers a class skill um, and a free skill, and then I'm not sure what that's for. Oh, this is armor. Um, whether or not it's, it is affected by armor, um, I think. That's what I presume it means because that's what the symbol is. Anyway, so sense of motive now becomes a class skill. And what that does for her is when you have a something you're trained in, so she as a fighter person, she's not trained in piloting. So if she adds so yes, yeah, so, so let's let, let's look at piloting. So when she adds one rank to piloting you then add her dex which is plus one so she has two because stealth is a class skill that she's been trained in when she adds if it's zero then it's like it was before but when it's zero if it's plus one it then she gets plus three to it. Uh, she has a she has armor, so her armor is affecting her stealth. So that's not a good example, but um, basically, what I'm trying to say is it gives you a plus three. So before, actually, she had a rank in it before, so that's a good example. So. Let me start again. Ignore everything I said for the last two minutes. When you add a, when something is a class skill, the first rank you get, you put into that skill, pulls on the training that you've learned. So, like in high school, for example. So, right now, her sense of motive, she has one rank in it, is plus one. As soon as it becomes a class skill, she now has a plus four. She gets plus three because she had training in it because of her class. In this case, because of her theme knowledge, because she's a cult hunter. 
she gets plus three in it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, here's another example here. Her computers, it's just a plus one straight across. But because this one is a class skill, even though it's both intelligence, this gives her plus three, plus one is four, plus one is five. Because it's a class skill, it gives you three bonus. The reason that's important is because you can gain feats that make some of these class skills, which will then give you a big bonus to it. Um, all right, so we checked and made sure that we fixed that. And then close this. There we go. And then we're going to go to here. So we have theme knowledge. Theme knowledge gives you a bonus to recall knowledge and gather information about cults. So now we're going to go ahead and code it. Again, it's just a reminder. So um, she doesn't have anything up here yet for that. So we're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to add an ability action. We're going to add the effect. I also want to make sure that this is filled in. It is not. So the source is um, Starfinder What did they say it was called? Starfinder number 16. The Blind City. Okay. Number 16. The Blind City. Feature is theme ability. So, see this is your theme. Level one it does have a specific level and here's the information. Unlock it, copy it and paste it. So there you go. You've got all your stuff. You got your she has all the, the details about it over here, so I don't have to um, try to find it. Or she doesn't have to find it either. I'm going to just go ahead and delete this one because I don't want... Uh, it's just easier to... Delete the spell action. If I delete the ability, it gets rid of that whole thing. We don't want to do that. We just want to get rid of the spell action, which is over here. Boom. Boom. I have made that mistake before. It is not fun. Target self. This is Cult Hunter. Theme. I'm just going to say Cult Hunter. We'll worry about it when she gets to level 6. Um... Minus 5 DC culture plus 5 about on cults plus 5. Diplomacy uh, 
on cults. There you go. So now we add it to herself. Boom. And we close it. All right. So we've been going for a little while now. It's over an hour. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it here. This gives us her improved combat maneuver. We don't really need to code anyway. Um, beyond having a reminder. So we'll go close this. Boom. Um, <coughs> um, so instead of improved combat maneuver trip, which we have here in her effects, we're just going to say improved trip. <coughs> Plus four attack to trip. <coughs> so because we don't have any of the um, right coding, it's not A T capital A T K or anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna leave it. Plus four to trip. Again, this is just here as a reminder doesn't actually do anything all right so that's done um, I'm probably gonna put it over here sometime at some point uh, that's considered a Vanguard thing so uh, and I think that's part of here Let's see there we go yeah that's that's here that's where she got it from under her aspects insights for Vanguard. So, um, I'm going to leave it this way because she built this and if she would rather have it look like this, then that's fine. Um, I'm just going to mention, hey, I changed it and she can just delete it if she doesn't like the shortened version of it. Um, it's because she has improved combat maneuver trip plus four attack to trip, whereas mine is just improved trip plus four trip. And I might just delete that. Actually, I'm just going to have plus four. Combat maneuver. All right. Okay, so... Next step is to finish up the, all, of the, all of these. So I'll be doing that at a later time. Um, I guess she has done some of it already. has done some of the work already. So that's all set. Um, Starfinder has a lot going on with it. Uh, it's not quite as insane as the original Pathfinder. The original Pathfinder is even worse than Starfinder. But... Um, I just love Starfinder. To me, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy with magic. Uh, you can see even from this picture here, with this casino background that I have, uh, <clears throat> you've got this lizard man, android, bug person, the skittermander dealer, a uh, little rat guy like Rac Rocket Raccoon, and of course the human. So uh, lots of cool stuff in this game, Starfinder. Um, slick art, absolutely. Lots of really good art. Uh, Paizo does a good job with their art, even with their uh, Pathfinder stuff, too. So, um, thanks for hanging out, Atomic. Uh, those of you who watch this later, again, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Thursdays are sort of fly by the seat of my pants. I don't have any particular times anymore. Um, I did it for a long time on Wednesdays and Thursdays at certain time schedules. But uh, life has just made it to where it's not possible to, plausible, I should say, to uh, set aside particular times each week anymore like I used to. So I try to do these as much as I can. If you have particular questions, if I didn't make any sense, or if you have other questions about um, other things that you would like to learn about, uh, check some of my other streams. 
I go over mapping. I go over uh, uh, you know adding effects, uh, building encounters, building a character, um, all those different things. So uh, I also cover have a whole s another YouTube stream about D and D. So if you want to know Fancy Grounds, how to do 5e in Fancy Grounds, go check it out. Um, but whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day and have a Merry Christmas, everyone.